Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. Now I would like to discuss about the laboratory diagnosis of AIDS. So in the laboratory diagnosis of AIDS, we have specific tests, non-specific tests. So let me write the, all the tests which are available. In the tests, we have specific tests for HIV infection. These specific tests include P24 antigen detection, next viral isolation or detection of viral nucleic acid or it can be antibody detection. So all these can occur. There are also some non-specific tests, non-specific tests like total and differential leukocyte count and there can be T lymphatic sorry T lymphocytic subset assays or there can be platelet count okay so all these can be there and that is one second third and there can be also IgG and IgA levels and also there can be skin tests for cell mediated immunity there are also tests which are done for opportunistic infections opportunistic infections and also for tumors okay now let us learn about the specific tests for HIV infection so the specific tests these include as I have said first antigen detection okay so in the antigen detection virus antigen one is p54 antigen and also reverse transcriptase so p54 and reverse transcriptase so these are detected in blood in two weeks whereas p54 antigen this is the earliest antigen to enter the earliest viral marker to appear in blood don't forget that this is the earliest viral marker to appear in blood so if you see the p54 antigen will appear and this will increase in size and once the p54 in asymptomatic phase in long asymptomatic phase the p54 antibody starts to develop and this p54 antibody will peak and it will remain during that time this p54 antigen which is there this will drop out okay so this is p54 antigen p54 antibody And once this occurs in asymptomatic phase, in asymptomatic phase, this will disappear. And again, whenever there is clinical disease, okay, again, whenever there is clinical disease, this P54 antigen again reappears, okay, it will reappear in clinical disease. And the P54 antibody which is there, this will decrease in clinical disease. So, this is what happens in in the uh, antigen test so in this antigen test we can do p54 antigen capture assay that is elisa can be done is used to detect the antigen so this is about p54 antigen okay now let us learn the second type is the second uh, specific test is virus isolation so the virus isolation it is really difficult to isolate the virus once the infection with HIV occurs in a person the person remains infected for lifelong the virus is present in all his fluids it can be present in blood it can be present in body fluids everywhere and mostly it is present in all CD4 lymphocytes most of the CD4 lymphocytes or CD4 cells right so here in virus isolation we will co-cultivate 
patients lymphocytes with uninfected human lymphocytes we will cultivate patients lymphocytes with uninfected human lymphocytes in the presence of interleukin 2 okay now you will detect the viral replication so if uh, there is replication is positive this is demonstrated by reverse transcriptase activity sorry activity and p24 antigen in culture okay this is not generally done it is only it may be done for research purposes but generally we don't do this uh, this test and the third test is detection of viral nucleic acid okay this detection of viral nucleic acid it is done by pcr in the pcr it can be of two types one we can do dna pcr or you can also do rna pcr in dna pcr the peripheral lymphocytes are lysed and pro viral dna is amplified okay it is highly sensitive highly sensitive and specific DNA PCR okay now there is also RNA PCR it is used for diagnosis and also monitoring the viremia monitoring the level of viremia it can be used for diagnosis and monitoring the level of viremia here RNA levels are measured okay so this is the PCR but the main uh, problem here is it is costly this PCR technique it is costly so only indicated if other methods are inconclusive because it is not necessary to do this uh, PCR test for all the individuals only and only if the other methods give inconclusive results then we use this viral PCR okay now the next test which can be done is antibody detection the third test is antibody detection so these are the most commonly employed antibody detection these are the simplest and most commonly used techniques for diagnosis of HIV so if you see I'll just draw a diagram draw a chart okay so if you see the HIV infection the thing that this is infection okay after several months to weeks of HIV infection, IgM antibodies are the first to occur. IgM antibodies, they occur within 3 to 4 weeks of infection. Within 3 to 4 weeks of infection, you see IgM antibodies. Okay, these will occur. These will increase. Okay, and then IgM antibodies, these will disappear by 8 to 10 weeks these will disappear by 8 to 10 weeks these will disappear while then the ant IgG antibodies also uh, sorry IgG antibodies also occur so these IgG antibodies which occur after IgM so these will increase and these will persist for life okay so these are IgM antibodies this is IgG antibodies which will persist for life now the infection of this IgG uh, sorry these antibodies are negative in window period only they become positive when initial viral replication takes place about after two to three days three weeks or three to four weeks so there are many tests so during this time if you see Okay, before going that, yeah, there are different tests which are available right now. 
uh, which will help us to determine the antibodies so the main tests include first the, there are screening tests and also the supplementary tests so first let us learn about the screening tests screening tests are of three types one it can be ELISA or it can be rapid tests or it can be simple tests okay rapid tests can be dot blot assay or lateral flow assay or it can be particle agglutination or it can also be HIV spot and combo tests combo tests com tests okay so these are the different rapid tests so first let us learn about the first screening test which is ELISA in the screening test the first screening test is ELISA now ELISA um, ELISA test so this is the screening test which is done in ELISA test we prepare antigen antigen is mainly prepared how is this prepared the HIV is grown in T lymphocyte cell line okay and thus the antigen from this uh, grown HIV we, we prepare the antigen and this antigen is coated on the surface now antigen is coated on surface of micro tire wells okay now to this antigen antibody is added first serum the patient serum is added to this we add the patient serum okay in the patient serum if you see so these are the antigens right in the patient serum you will have antibodies so these antibodies in the patient serum if antibodies are present they will bind to this patient serum and now what will serum is added and antibodies bound to sorry bind to antigens okay viral antigens now you will wash it so once you wash it all the serum is lost only and only the antigens and the antibodies are intact okay now now you will add anti goat anti human goat sorry anti human goat immunoglobulin linked to suitable enzyme is added okay now this will bind to the present antigen antibody sorry this will bind to the antibody which is present let me Once you have added this, this will bind to the antibody. Okay. Now you will add a color forming substance. Okay. Once you will add color forming substance, you will see a color. This will bind to this enzyme and you will see the color. Then you can say it is positive. So this is how you will test ELISA. ELISA's test is most is very sensitive and it is a good screening test which is used in India. Now this is about the ELISA. Now what about the other tests? Uh, I have said there are rap, some rapid tests which are available. So these rapid tests, so these will take less than 30 minutes. And they are not expensive the best rapid test which is still used in india is dot blot essay it is used in india
in dot blood assay you will have antigen of hiv here and you will also have hiv antibody which is uh, and sorry hiv1 antigen here and hiv2 antigen here there are two wells and once if you uh, put the serum then you will see dots which appear so based on the dots you can say that uh, there is uh, reaction and that is that is positive that is one of the rapid test now let us learn about the supplementary test supplemental tests so if you see the supplemental tests one supplemental test which is used is western blot test okay in this western blot test first we will prepare uh, hiv proteins are separated first um, we will have a polyacrylamide gel okay to this polyacrylamide gel you will add the hiv containing uh, proteins and then you will do gel electrophoresis okay when you do gel electrophoresis the proteins are separated so the proteins hiv proteins are separated okay and these are blotted on strips of nitrocellulose paper on strips of nitrocellulose paper you will blot them okay and now you'll have strips of nitrocellulose paper with the hiv protein separated hiv proteins on them now to this you will add the serum so now to this this is the gel in that you have nitrocellulose papers wells and there are hiv proteins which are already present here there are already some hiv proteins which are present here now to this you will add a uh, serum in the serum if antibodies are present these antibodies will react with the proteins and they form a complex protein antigens and they form a complex okay now to this you will wash the strips and then you will then add enzyme conjugated anti human globulin it is similar to elisa okay this will attach this is the antigen and then antibody will attach and then this enzyme conjugated antibody will attach and then you will add color substance so coloring substance or suitable substrate we call it as substrate this substrate will color the reagent so this will attach and here the substrate this is called substrate is attached and this will produce color and this shows it is positive okay so you see bands here you see that there are multiple bands which are positive now okay so this is how you do western blot so what are the antibodies which are commonly detected in this western blot antibodies to p54 or p31 or gp41 gp120 or gp160 all these are detected now there is one more test which can be done which is called has indirect immunofluorescence test the other test which can be done is indirect immunofluorescence test